Okay, so we have studied uh, what is a cell, what is a cell theory. Okay, so we have seen like different uh, uh, theories proposed by two different personals and who discovered cell uh, and uh, who viewed the cell, all those things in our previous uh, class. Okay, so now we are going to see the classification. So the first uh, type of classification of cell, okay, based on the cellularity. Okay. So, the first classification is unicellular, multicellular. Okay, so it is very uh, easy to define these names. So, uni means single cell, multicellular means like more than one cell. Okay, so we will see in the way of uh, difference between chart between this unicellular and multicellular to understand this particular concept. Okay, so uh, if you take unicellular, the body of the unicellular organism is composed of single cell. Okay, so only one cell is going to make up the whole organism. Okay, so but if you come into the second side, that is multicellular. Okay, so more than one cell in the body, that is, uh, it can be two cell, it can be three cell, or it can be even a million number of cells. Okay, but it should be more than one. Okay, so the whole organism is made up of more than one cell. Okay, so it just exceeds the number one, then it's going to come under multicellular. Okay, so this is the first uh, difference between this unicellular and multicellular organisms. Second one, okay, so this is very important one that is no membrane bound organelles are present in unicellular organisms. Okay, so we need to understand what is or what are these membrane bound organelles. Okay, so uh, you would have heard about a few organelles named as mitochondria, chloroplast, uh, Golgi apparatus. Okay, so all these are organelles. Okay, so organelles are uh, smaller components or parts under a or inside a cell. Okay, so which does some uh, function for this particular cell. Okay, so in a unicellular organism, these membrane bound organelles are not present. Okay, so usually a cell will have a membrane surrounding it. Okay, for its protection and all those transport everything. Okay, so we call it a cell membrane. Okay, so cell membrane will be usually the only membrane uh, which will cover a, a cell, entire cell. Okay, sometimes it can have a cell wall. Okay, uh, if you take a micro bacteria, it can have a capsule. All these are some membranes that bounds the cell. Okay, but inside the cell, there are few organelles. Okay, our parts we call it as organelles, which also have its own membrane to protect it. Okay, for example, a nucleus will have a nuclear membrane. Similarly, you have a Golgi apparatus, uh, mitochondria, everything have their own membrane to uh, protect it and facilitate the transport across it. Okay, so these organelles are called as membrane bound organelles. Okay, so these types of organelles are present only in multicellular organism and these are absent in unicellular organism, which is the most important difference between these two class of organisms. Then so, we know that uh, unicellular organism is made up of only one cell. So, what is going to happen? All the job for that uh, particular organism, okay, for its survival is going to be carried out by that one cell, okay. So, all the job is going to be done by that single or one cell, okay. If you take the example of multicellular organism, here you have like plenty of cells. So, a single cell does not need to carry out the entire function. So, what we can do? We can have a division of labor. Okay, so for example, in a human, if you take like uh, red blood cells, RBC, so you just take the work of carrying the oxygen from uh, lungs and heart to different parts of the body. Okay, then liver cell, you take care of the function of liver. Okay, then nerve cell, uh, transmit the synapses, that is the responses uh, from brain uh, or to from spinal cord to different parts of body or carry the information. So likewise, each cell has its own uh, job to do. Okay, if you come take into multicellular organism because it has uh, different uh, huge number of cells and different types of cells. Okay, so next in a unicellular organism, uh, as the entire organism is made up of one cell. Okay, so a cell is the whole organism. So what's going to happen? The cell body is exposed to the environment. Okay, so the entire cell body is exposed to the environment that is outside environment. Okay. But if you take the multicellular organism, what's going to happen? Uh, only outer cells are exposed. 
okay so if you for example the skin cells if you take from a body only the skin cells uh, or the outer so in whatever we have outside usually it will be like skin cells so only these cells are exposed to the outer environment unless we have some uh, external injury or like a acid burn or like a heat burn okay where our skin cells are damaged because of which the internal cells are exposed to the environment okay so apart from that usually only outer cells are exposed and the inner cells are very safe in the envir internal environment okay so this is the another difference and then unicellular uh, these cells are like very small and tiny okay so only visible under the microscope okay we can't see these cells in the through a normal eyes okay it will be like very small and tiny so usually the multicellular uh, organism the cells usually somewhat larger comparing to the uh, unicellular organisms okay so what happens uh, many are visible through naked eye uh, it's not like not all uh, are visible in, uh, through naked eye but many are visible through naked eye you don't need help of the microscope to view these cells okay but if you want to uh, see deep into the cells you need a microscope okay you can't see all those things with naked eye but just to view the outer uh, view of a cell in multicellular you can uh, for few cells through naked eye okay next okay so this is if you connect all the previous point you come up with this particular point okay so uh, injury in a cell leads to cell death which leads to whole organism death okay uh, because the in unicellular the entire organism is made up of only one cell so what we can infer from this uh, if some injury happens to the cell because it's already exposed to the outer environment okay so if there is a damage to that cell the cell is going to die okay if the cell dies what happens the whole organism itself dies okay but if you see in multicellular uh, we have like many cells so imagine you take a needle prick uh, pricking in your hand okay or you have thorn is like uh, pricked in your legs okay what's going to happen the cell in that particular area is going to get damaged okay even if it can die okay but what happens that cell will be replaced by a new cell because of cell division happening inside your body okay after some time okay just because of this one cell death you are not going to die okay because we are compressed of many uh, millions of cells okay so the organism is not going to die because of one cell injury okay then uh, because of all these condition the life span of unicellular organisms are very very short okay so it has a shorter life span so because of all these advantages multicellular organism is going to be comparatively having a longer life span than unicellular organisms okay so we have few common examples of unicellular as well as multicellular organism listed here for example uh, amoeba euglena paramecium so all these organisms are examples of unicellular organism and uh, for multicellular you have like animals like including human beings then you have plants and most of the fungi you, uh, which comes under your multicellular organism okay so uh, in this classification we know what is a unicellular uh, how what are the characters of this unicellular organism examples of unicellular organism and how it's differentiated from multicellular organism okay